Hey there everyone, this is Tech Jazz coming to you with a deck tech video for Black White Vampires from Rivals of Ixalan. Um, so last time I did a vampire video was for Ixalan itself, which the deck has actually changed quite a bit since then. So with that, uh, like always, I'll start with uh, what everything is, what it does, and then how it contributes to the deck. So to start, I'll start with creatures, which we have four Sky Marcher Aspirants, which is one white for a 2-1 Vampire Soldier with Ascend. Ascend is uh, if you control 10 or more permanents, you get the city's blessing for the rest of the game. Uh, when Sky Marcher Aspirant has Sky Marcher Aspirant has flying as long as you uh, have the city's blessing. So in other words, if you control 10 or more permanents, you get city's blessing, and then Sky Marcher gains flying for pretty much the rest of the game. Uh, moving on, we have Adanto Vanguard, uh, which we are running 4 of, which is 1 white, 1 colorless for a 1-1 one, one vampire soldier. As long as Adanto Vanguard is attacking, it gets plus 2, plus 0. Oh. And then it has the ability of pay for life. Adanto Vanguard gains indestructible until the end of turn. Um, and yeah, he's pretty much, pretty much just in there for that. He's actually pretty flexible. So, like, it just he's good against other aggro decks because you can block and then pay the four and. Probably yeah, lose just as much life, but you're you're getting there's a chance you could cause something to get killed by blocking with it. Or you can just if you're going up against a more passive deck like a control deck or some and you resolve him, he can hit for three damage as soon as turn three. Um moving on we have Legion Lieutenant, which is one black, one colorless for 2-2 two, two Vampire Knight, with other vampires you control get plus one plus one. Basic two drop anthem for vampires, which honestly no complaints. Uh turn one into a Sky Marcher Aspirant into a turn two this. You're already sitting on a 3-2 Sky Marcher. Um even if you wait a few turns and do like Turn one uh, Sky Marcher, turn two Adanto Vanguard into a turn three Lieutenant. You're staring down a 2-2 two, two Vanguard and a 3-2, and that 2-2 two, two can turn into a 4-2. So, like, honestly, no matter what time you drop a Legion Lieutenant, it's just going to buff everything up. And even just by that one point of attack and power and toughness, it, like, just skyrockets the game in your favor so easily uh, moving on to our three copies of forerunner of the legion which is one white two colors for two two vampire knight with when uh, forerunner of the legion enters battlefield you may search your library for a vampire card reveal it then shuffle your library and put that card on top uh, whenever another vampire enters battlefield under your control target creature gets plus one plus one to end of turn now Forerunner of the Legion is honestly, in my opinion, probably the best out of any of them. Uh, he just works so well. Um, we're only running three because honestly, you only need three. He's working as this deck's fourth copy of Maverin uh, Fane. He's working as a copy five of Legion Lieutenant, copy five of Adanto Vanguard, copy five of Sky Marcher Aspirant. Um, he just filters the deck and then his second ability is honestly really good because you turn, we'll say you turn, drop him turn three and you fetch Maverin with his ability, play Maverin next turn. You get a, you get to put plus one plus one on a vampire just for playing Maverin and then as soon as you attack with whatever vampire you put that one more, plus one plus one on, you get another token, so you get to put, you get to give something plus two, plus two, or just distribute those plus one, plus ones wherever you want. And it happens any time a vampire hits play, so anytime Maverin's ability fires off, 
and he's in play, you're pumping something else. And honestly, off of him alone, there's times you can easily get something like plus three, plus three in one turn just off of his ability. Um, overall, I think he's great. He's a beautiful turn three drop. He's a great top deck. He's a great... He's honestly just great to drop whenever. Um, moving on to... Maverin Fane, Dusk Apost Apostle? I, I have no idea how to pronounce that. Uh, it's one white, two colors for 2-2 two, two legendary creature, Vampire Cleric. Uh, whenever one or more non-token vampires you control attacks, get plus one, plus one, create a plus one, plus, create a one, one white vampire creature token. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Um, overall, just another great top deck if you don't have one already in play um great to fetch with the forerunner of the legion like i said and you honestly always are gonna him his presence on the board is all you need because as soon as he comes into play as soon as you've attacked with something else or attack with something else he's gonna give you immediate value and it just those 1-1 one, one tokens do a lot and then like I said there's the whole anytime you attack and you have a lead forerunner on the field you're just pumping other things up and then legion's lieutenant is also pumping those tokens you could easily make it to where you're swinging with 3-3 three, three tokens as early as eh, as early as turn 4 because of the fact that Maverin won't come in till turn 4 in that setup but uh, it's it's still worth it. Uh, moving on to our final creature, which is Sanctum Seeker. Two black, two colorless for three, four Vampire Knight. Whenever, whenever a vampire you control attacks, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. Now, what I love about Sanctum Seeker is in a unconventional way, he's kind of a lord for vampires. Like, he doesn't... Not in the sense that he buffs their attack and defense, but in the sense that he's, as soon as he attacks, your opponent is already losing life for the fact that he's, that you're just attacking and it just, it makes it to where tokens are way better to throw at your opponent and, I mean, it, he makes it to where the game goes much quicker and honestly, he's, in his own right, can be a win condition just by having enough uh, creatures in play. He could end the game on his own. And uh, again, kind of bounces off Maverin here because you more tokens you keep dropping and swinging with, the more Sanctum Seeker is going to fire off his ability and the more Forerunner is going to pump other things and it just... It, it can snowball very quickly with uh, Sanctum Seeker and four of them I'm fine with um, because he is at the top of our mana curve and is the most expensive thing in the deck. So like that's just a great place to end mana curve on creatures. Um, I'm not running uh, Vana or um, Alenda because Alenda's nice and all but I don't like that she's only a 1-1 one, one, and if you're not running sacrificial or sacrifice outlets she can be a little difficult to work with and then Vana is just Vana doesn't really have a lot of playability towards the stack I mean she has use she's just not towards this build useful um so moving on to back row spells we have two legions landings which is one way uh whenever when legions landing enters battlefield create a one one vampire creature token with lifelink and then when you attack with three or more creatures transforms legion landing into a danto the first fort which the backside says tap it add one white mana to your mana pool or tap one white two colorless and a danto uh, Adanto the first four to create a 1-1 white vampire creature token which uh, 
again, Legion's Lanting also funnels into Forerunner's second ability, which just helps more, because you pay four mana, you get a token, and you pump something else by uh, plus one, plus one to end a turn. It just, it helps a lot, and also, if you are trying to pull off the Ascend on Sky Marcher, Legion's Landing does help towards that too. Um, overall, it's just a great card. Uh, we're only running two due to the fact that it is legendary. And um, it, they're kind of sitting in as pieces of four for Forerunner of Legion and uh, Maverin. So it just evens out nicely. Uh, moving on, we have our four copies of Fatal Push. We're running a black-white deck. What it, it fatal push is going to be in here regardless. Oh, uh, one black instant destroy target creature if it has converted mana cost two or less, and then you can revolt it, destroy tar that creature if it has converted mana cost four or less instead. If a permanent you controlled left the battlefield this turn, so pulling off the revolt is a little bit more difficult in this build than my regular Ixalan build, because the regular Ixalan had um, uh, Yeheni in the main board to go and deal with that, and in this build, Yeheni's not in it, so it's a little bit harder to pull it off, but we do have other ways of getting it. Um, one of those ways being costly plunder. So we have no card advantage in this deck, whatsoever except for forerunner which even then i'm don't want to say that's really card advantage not not amazing card advantage but so costly plunder one white one black one colorless instant as an additional cost to cast costly plunder sacrifice an artifact or a creature draw two cards we're tokening in this deck why not like it's not going to kill us to lose one creature token to draw two cards and most of the time, those two cards we draw into are going to cause us to get another token anyway. So, it's... I, I'm completely okay putting the four of in here. It thins the deck out, and it just makes it to where we can draw into what we need sooner for probably the cheapest amount of mana that black has to offer right now. And I don't believe white has any draw good draw cards in format right now so moving on to our last spell is call to the feast which is one black one white two colorless create three one one white vampire creature tokens with lifelink we're running in this for this in for a few reasons for one it makes it to where as soon as sanctum seeker drops or if as soon as those uh, tokens drop, Sanctum Seeker is going to be popping you three additional life uh, every time they attack. And then also, Forerunner of Legion. This is how I said we can get up to three hits off of Forerunner's ability in one turn. It counts at, for each vampire that comes in play. That's three tokens, so Forerunner of Legion... Even if you just do it on himself, you just turned him into a 5-5 five, five tank for one turn, which is going to be a little... A lot of people are not going to be too thrilled to stare down something that big that quickly, or, I mean, it's still turn 4, some decks are setting up, you can spread that around other creatures, and if you have a Legion's Lieutenant in play, and you just gave three other creatures plus 1, plus 1 to end a turn... You're giving them plus two, plus two, right off the bat, off that for that turn. So it's it benefits a lot. Um, and I just I like the card because if you're on the advantage or like we'll say you're ahead in the game and all that, ooh, call to the to the feast is just oppression at that point. It just overwhelms the game to a point where you're probably gonna win and then even if you're like if your opponent has the lead and is just you're being oppressed by them this kind of helps you buy a turn of either 
defending or just kind of gaining three extra life. So it it's nice. It helps. Um, I personally am completely fine playing the four of them because normally we're probably going to play this the turn turn four and then go into a turn five sanctum seeker just so we can automatically proc sanctum seeker's ability as soon as he hits um overall that's the main board uh, and then for lands we're running four concealed courtyards four unclaimed territories 10 planes and then six swamps obviously since we're running more into white than we are black um overall main board i kind of wish i could squeeze um um um, um gifted etherborn in but problem is is that two black can be difficult early game and coming down to it i would rather have a donto because you can make him indestructible, so you have something that's going to be able to survive board wipes, because guess what? We have uh, uh, Bantu's Last Reckoning, we have uh, Fumigate, we got, we, we, we got things that we don't really want to deal with, and being that we're running a token deck, people are going to probably sit there with a the Fumigate and be like, eh, Fumigate, Fumigate, Fumigate. Um, so, I would prefer Gifted Aetherborn in, just because, truthfully, I think Gifted Aetherborn is the better card, but given for what we need for the stack, Adanto is better. Um, outside that, there's not really any issues I can say with the main board, like, it's pretty smooth, it's aggressive when it needs to be, it's laid back when it needs to be um works pretty well very consistent um no real issues with it um with that being said i'll go on to our sideboard and with our sideboard we are running four cast outs to deal with those pesky gods like hepetra and um ronos which we occasionally see scarab god mainly because we don't really want to deal with the scarab god uh, we also have Settle the Wreckage, uh, mainly to deal with those aggro matchups, just to... Random Up Red is still s trying to be a thing after the banning, but we're still gonna... We're gonna run them in to deal with it. Uh, Solemnity, we're running in at 2 to deal with those uh, energy decks that are still trying to survive the banning, and then the um, Merfolk look like they're getting some love so we want to deal with those guys um we have two radiant destinies in the sideboard which i'm kind of iffy on how i feel about them but um they're really in here for if we just want to overwhelm as hard as possible on our opponents and we can easily pull off ascend by I want to say roughly around turn 10 is when we could, or correction, turn 4 the earliest. Turn 5 reliably. So, like, it's, I don't know how I feel about it. Like, we have Legion's Lieutenant, we have Forerunner of the Legion. It's in here for now, but it, I, I could see it being taken out for whatever someone finds better, like, um, Vraska's Contempt, maybe. Um, so, moving on from there, we have our two Yahini Undying Partisans. Those are when we come up against other token decks, and it just, we know she can become extremely huge in that, uh, setup. Um, she also... If we want that extra, if we want that for sure way of uh, securing Fatal Push's Revolt, just main one of her into the main board and uh, Forerunner of the Legion will probably fetch her right to the top of the deck. 
drop her and then just sack a token for Fatal Push. It's... She, she has use, but I don't feel she warrants main board playability anymore. Uh, going on next, we have uh, Bantu's Last Reckoning, which we have right in there for those um, uh, matches against like Ren and Apparet or something more aggro that's going to hit us heavily early game. And which we can hold early game pretty well with this deck, but I would like um like more for uh for sure way of being able to deal with early game aggro than just hoping for best that we token quick enough or get the right cards at the right time. So it's in there for that. And then those two fields of ruin to deal with good old uh, transform lands uh, for example um, search for his kata is seeing all the play in the world so we have those in there to just deal with that right away um, then your occasional growing rights of oh I can't remember what the green one's called um other vampire decks like love to run Legion's Landing. Um, in fact, a lot of white decks are running Legion's Landing, even if it's not even vampire, because it's not that hard to pull off, and it honestly is pretty beneficial. So, uh, yeah, two fields of ruin to just deal with those. Um, overall, like I said, it's a pretty solid deck. Um, I'm won't mind seeing another playset of removal in the main board, but I just, as a, as is, I don't see anything that could really make a huge difference. I mean, there is Vraska's Contempt, but I don't quite know what I would want to take out for Vraska's Contempt, because Call to a Feast I love at 4, um... Sanctum Seeker, I feel, needs to be at 4, and those are really the only two cards I would consider even moving in place of Varaska's Contempt, so I guess, like, if we did look at it, I would probably drop Call to the Feast, but then it does hurt the overall build of just spamming tokens, so... It comes down to just, like, perspective. Um, with that being said, that's really all I have to say on this deck. Uh, I do have, um, I'm working on a few other decks at the moment, so, uh, I should be getting those out shortly, and then, uh, since it's a new set, I'll be doing, uh, both, uh, a deck tech for the Planeswalker deck for Veraska and the Planeswalker deck for, um, Angrath, so those should be coming out soon. Um, with that being said, uh, please leave a like and subscribe. Uh, comment if you have any comments on the deck, and um, also just comment on what you guys would like to see. Like I, I like to hear what other people want to see built and want what they want to see me build. So go ahead and just leave a like and subscribe and comment. Thank you.